Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to use a conditional variable with a C code example. I'm going to build up the C code step by step and the finished product of this building up is what you can see here. If you're only interested in spurious wakeups, then you're probably better off here. And if you're interested in why you need a signal before the wait, then you're better off here or you're good here. But before we start, what is a conditional variable? When would you use it? The conditional variable is used to signal a change that's important. It signals a change. So it tells to some function, well, the part of code or the object that you're waiting for just changed. Check it again if it really changed and then go and do what you would do if it would have changed. I think it's kind of like an observer pattern. Pa pattern. You register at an observable object and when the object changes, it sends you an information, well, I changed, please do whatever you have to do if I changed, but do it within a critical section. Okay, that being said, let's uh, go and get started. This is the code we're talking about. This is, uh, we have three parts in this code. First, we have the G message over here. Uh, nobody cares what's in this message struct. Important is just that this variable is shared throughout various threads. And then we have these two functions and two threads process message and set message. Let's first look at set message. It gets a message as its parameter and then locks a mutex. Why do we need it? Because this is a global variable and the variable is accessed through various threads. So we first lock it so we can make it safe. We change the variable and we unlock it again. And now we tell the signal or we, we send the signal, well, it now changed. If somebody is waiting for a change, then go ahead, it changed. Okay, now let's check out process message. We're here in a infinite loop, infinite loop. And because we also want to access the G message here, we have to lock the mutex as well. And we check, is it null? And because we just checked out said message, maybe it's not null. So we just go on here and we set our local message. Then we set G message to null. And because we don't use G message anymore from now on, we can just unlock it. And here, further down, we can just use our local message. So everything is safe. Okay, but this is an infinite loop. So we just go back up again and we lock again and we check again, is it null? And this time maybe it's null. So what we do is we unlock it and we wait for the signal that someone sends a signal. So we wait for someone calling said message. And now someone's calling said message, it does the lock. Um, assigns G message and sends a signal. We were waiting for the signal and then, ah, okay, someone sent the signal. The stuff that we were waiting for, like the observer pattern, changed. So now we lock it again and now we do this assignment again, set it to null, unlock it and do our processing. Okay, that's the basic idea. I want to tell you that this code is wrong and has mistakes, don't use it. But this is the basic idea. You need to understand what I just explained in order to uh, get the next steps. Because everything that follows is just the same logic, but making the code safe, basically. Just make it safe, yes. Okay, that being said, what's the problem in this code? The problem is that we have, do you know from literature, read between the lines? We have these read between the lines problem. So what has, well, what happens when something happens between unlock and wait? Or what happens what if something between, it's so difficult, if something happens between wait and lock? What could happen? You need to understand that conditional signal, sending this signal does not add the signal to any queue. It's just if someone is waiting, that someone is woken up. If no one is waiting, then the signal is just going to the trash. Nobody cares about it. The problem then is someone checks the message. The, the mutex is still locked, so there's no problem. Checks the message, unlocks it. And now in this situation here, the CPU changes over to this one, locks it, sets it, unlocks it, sends the signal. But this thread is not waiting yet. So it sends the signal and then we're switching back to this thread. This thread, blah, 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 this thread goes into the wait status. But the signal is already lost, is already done. So we're waiting forever. We're waiting forever for a change. There cannot be any change anymore. That's a problem that can happen between here. So we need to, 
we need to make all these three messages, all these, sorry, all these three function calls, we have to make it atomic, have to make them atomic into one function call. By the way, I cannot come up with a good example what happens between this one and this one. Just believe me, it's important. Okay, anyhow, so what we need is we need one function call that does all this atomic. And in the case of POSIX threads, we have this function, p thread conditional weight. Let's make it more clean, then it looks like this. Because we do the lock and unlock and checking for the signal, we in this case, of course, need the signal itself and the lock. And for the sake of brevity, let's remove these curly braces here, then it looks like this. This is what you will hopefully never see because it's still wrong code. You need to understand a different problem, and that is that p thread cont weight can come back randomly, basically. So even if no one uh, sets the signal, set the signal, the wait function can come back. So even though G message didn't actually change, we start to go down here. So what we actually need is we need a while loop. So if this function randomly comes back without anything changed, then we just enter this state here again, we check again. And if it didn't change, just go back to the wait. If it did change, then go back down here, back, just go down here. And just to make it more clear, I always have problems remembering that. Remember that this function first does an unlock, then does a wait, and then locks again. So whenever we come out of this function, whenever wait comes back, and we're back here, it's still locked, okay? So we have a lock here, then we go down here, we unlock here, we unlock, we wait, and we lock, we go back here, it's still locked, we unlock again, we wait, and we lock again. And so, that means that when we're here or when we go back up here, it's always locked. So we're always safe. But let's remove that. And this randomly coming out of the wait function is called a spurious wake up. That was this thing I was talking about. Okay, and that's basically it. I hope you got the idea. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment section. Make sure to read the video description in case I have to make any corrections. I put them in the video description. Thank you very much for watching.